Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. So continuing with the obstacles and coming on to the next obstacle, which is on the complex table interactions. So as per this obstacle, we need to click the edit button for John Doe. Okay, and this is the row, as you can see. Now, the complexity behind this and why it is a hard obstacle is because if I refresh this page, you will see that uh, the row will keep on changing. So as you can see, this particular row where John Doe exists, it keeps on changing as I keep on refreshing the page. So there is no guarantee that when you open the page, uh, this will still be in the same row, right? So it is dynamically changing. And we need to use the constraint action mode to basically uh, find out the row of where this particular uh, data exists. And then uh, we need to also click on the edit button. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So the first thing is obviously uh, we need to scan that particular table. So I'm going here and I'm going to scan the application. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to scan the application and then uh, we are going to use the table here. And also uh, we are going to add this edit button. Okay, so for now it will show that uh, the selected item is not unique because there are lots of different edit buttons on the rows. But uh, don't worry about this, we will take care of this automatically when uh, we write the test case. Okay. So I'm going to rename this module to this particular obstacle. Okay, and then I'm going to save and I'm going to close. Right, uh, so now coming back here, uh, we have got our obstacle and then let's go to our test cases folder. Here, I'm going to create a new test case and rename it with that particular uh, ID of the obstacle. And then um, I'm going to drag the module right here. So inside this, you will see that we have the table and then we have got the edit button, right? Now, if you look back at this module, uh, you will notice that this table is not organized uh, in the same manner as it is displayed on the web page. Why? Because every row has got these two buttons, right? And we need the edit button, but uh, it should be under this particular row right, or any particular row in the table. But if you look at this module, uh, the edit button is outside the row or column. It is inside the table, which is not correct, right? Because uh, if I'm selecting any row, then I want to click on that particular edit button, right? So we need to decide this dynamically. Um, and to do this, what we will do is we will uh, change this position of uh, this particular element and uh, we'll put it from the table to a particular row, okay? So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to drag this edit control and put it inside the row so that along with the cell, we have also got the edit button, okay? So you can rearrange the module attributes as you like within the module, okay? So here now, if I come back, and now you can see under the table, we have got the row, we have got the cell, and we have got the edit button, right? So the first job is to obviously find out the row uh, which contains that particular value, right? And for that, I'm going to the cell value here, and I'm going to go with the first name. Uh, now we know our first name is John, and I'm going to change this action mode to constraint, okay? Now also you will notice that uh, John is not the unique first name. There are two rows with the same name. So we need to also put a constraint on the last name, okay? So here again, um, I will choose the cell as last name. And again, I will put this value here and put a constraint. So using these two constraints, it will be able to find out the row even though it is dynamically changing on the page, okay? And now uh, we want to click on the edit button. So that should be pretty simple. So we will just use the click operation on the edit button once it is able to find or select this row based on these two constraints, okay? So that's the logic you need to apply uh, in order to resolve this particular obstacle, okay? So now uh, let's go back here. We'll change the work state to completed. 
And now let's go ahead and run this in Scratchbook. So as you can see, uh, it is able to click on the correct edit button. Using the two constraints, it was able to find out the row which contains the first name as John and last name as Do. And uh, it was able to complete this obstacle. So these are uh, the particular actions which you need to perform in your test case in order to complete this particular obstacle. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.